Hey guys, welcome to Cold Antler Farm. This is vlog number 24 and today we are talking about the hard choice of raising animals for food. So if you're not familiar with me, let me introduce myself. My name is Jenna Wolvenrich. I'm an author and a homesteader and I live on a small farm that's six and a half acres in upstate New York on the side of a mountain. And here I raise pigs for pork, I raise chickens for meat and eggs, I raise vegetables for food and for feeding my critters as well. And I also raise sheep and various other forms of poultry, turkeys and geese and meat rabbits. And I think that covers all the edible species. I also have a working uh, small draft horse, a fell pony named Merlin. I live with a Border Collie and a 15-year-old Siberian Husky, and I have a barn cat slash indoor house cat named Bolyadere. I don't think I forgot anybody. Bees. There's also a hive of bees. They're easy to forget because they're insects and because, honestly, they don't, you know, make a lot of complaints or a lot of ruckus. So that's where I'm coming from. I raise animals for food, I hunt, stock, butcher and stuff animals, uh, meaning I'm a, I'll stuff a turkey for the, for the oven and I'm learning to stuff animals as in taxidermy as a side income. That's a whole nother vlog though. But I, I just want to make it clear that my life is with animals. It's not with animals in the sense that I work at an animal shelter. My life is with animals in the sense that I feed them, they feed me, I hunt, I stock, I create food out of, and a living out of living with animals. They share my bed, they share my plate. So I'm sharing all that with you in case you don't know me. Nice to meet you. I'm Jenna. Thanks for stopping by this vlog. So last episode I asked for topics, suggestions, questions, comments on what you'd like to see future vlogs be about and I got a very touching email from a woman who is figuring out a business plan for her first farm and who wants to make grass-fed meat and uh, sustainable agriculture part of her business plan. I think that's great. Congratulations on the, on the decision and all the best of luck to you. Here's her dilemma. She's an ex-vegan. She is very compassionate about animals. She does not like the idea yet, or maybe she never will. I get that. I get that. I was vegan and vegetarian for nearly 10 years. Uh, most of my 20s I was vegetarian. Uh, my reason being very similar to a lot of vegans and vegetarians, I was against animal suffering for human gain because it seems crappy. So first of all, if you're not comfortable killing animals and selling animals for meat or selling offspring to other farmers to raise as uh, livestock for their starter flocks or just to have as grazers, or if you're not comfortable selling animals, period, don't do it. Why do it? There's plenty of people out there who are comfortable or who have dreamed of being ranchers and wish they could have their own farms and raise cows and if they're in your market and they'd rather do it, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with starting a co-op where you raise the vegetables or you raise the laying hens and they raise the pastured poultry and they raise the beef? You don't, don't, just because you understand how sustainable agriculture works and you're comfortable eating meat again, if you're not, if you're not, con I don't want to say content, if you're not okay with raising animals to the point of being the one who kills them and puts them on the plate, then don't do it. I, you're, you may, that may change, it may not. I, I know with me, I wasn't okay with it, and the more I read, the more I learned about agriculture, the more time I spent around small farmers and in a farming community, that all changed. The second thing I'd say after deciding whether or not you even want to raise animals for food, if you're truly comfortable with it, whether you are you aren't, whether you decided you're going to let someone else raise the meat animals and you're focusing on vegetables and eggs or fish farm or whatever it is you want to do, read everything. And I mean read everything. Read the vegetarian and vegan books that are uh, very pro-animal rights and, uh, and, and pro a vegan lifestyle, read those books. There's some good points in them. Also, read other books like The Vegetarian Myth 
and Folks This Ain't Normal by Joel Salatin. Read uh, The Compassionate Carnivore by Catherine Friend. Read everything. And, or if you don't have time to read, listen to it. A lot of these books, um, like The Omnivore's Dilemma and Folks This Ain't Normal, A Vegetarian Myth, and I'm sure many pro-vegetarian vegan books. Please, if you're, a, if you're a vegan or vegetarian and have really important books for people to read, post them in the comments below so people get as much information as possible. So yes, read everything, but also spend time on vegetable and egg-only farms and spend time with people raising animals for food. Talk to them. Shake hands with the people who are killing pigs and slaughtering chickens. And shake hands with the people who are growing flower farms and raising trees and, and doing other things that don't involve any animal death. See what speaks to you. And know you can change your mind. You're not going to prison if you start a vegetable farm. You're just laying the foundation for systems that can always build off each other. That's what's great about sustainable and organic farming. Raising animals with that system, whether it's just chickens for eggs and, and honeybees to pollinate those vegetables, that is a system that works to enrich the soil, add food on tables in the, in the sense of stewing, you know, stewing hens and eggs, as well as pollinating not just your farm, but all the flora and fauna around you in the surrounding forest, your neighbor's flower beds, the apple trees that grow wild on hillsides. You're adding to the world, not detracting from it. So consider all that. So I'm going to speak from the heart here. I'm okay with killing animals for food. I know that's a controversial thing to say to some folks, but I'm okay with it. I wasn't okay with it. I was a vegetarian for a long time. But as I described earlier in this video, the more farmers I met, the more I read about ecological systems, the more I learned about grass-based farming and sustainable farming practices, the more I learned names like Joel Salatin and Wendell Berry, and the more I learned about things like permaculture and uh, you know, organic systems and stacking and building on top of each other, the more okay I was with it. And that information is power in a lot of senses. Now, just because I'm okay with the idea of killing animals for food doesn't mean that I enjoy it or look forward to it. I certainly don't. Um, butchering days here are dirty work. It's unpleasant, but it's part of the process. I hire professionals to do large animals like sheep and pigs, and I myself butcher uh, turkeys and chickens and rabbits. I'm gonna crib a little bit from Barbara Kingsolver's book, Animal Vegetable Miracle, because in her chapter about harvesting uh, turkeys and chickens on her farm, she makes a really wonderful point, which is that most people only have three associations with animals. The first association they have is with other people. They interact the most with other human beings. That is the most common animal they see. The second is their pets. Their cats, their dogs, their horses, their bunnies, their ferrets. Pets. The third animal, when they hear the word animal, they think of or relate with is wild animals. The bald eagle on the Discovery Channel. The hawk flying in the sky above their farm the deer loping across the forest's fields, you know, wild animals, or things they see like tigers and lions and zoos. Most of us would not consider chopping off the head and eating any of these three things, right? You're not gonna kill people, you're not gonna kill your pets, and you sure as heck aren't about to go slay a tiger and have tiger kebabs. So that's where most people are coming from. They're coming from those three associations of animals, people, pets, wildlife. Now, if you're not a hunter or a farmer, then you have no other associations with animals. Your other association is grocery store. And in the grocery store, we don't even call them animals. We call cows beef. We call uh, young cows veal. We call, <laughs> we call lamb and goats mutton we, or lamb chops, which few people associate lamb chop with sheep or the 18 month old sheep they may actually be eating. Uh, you know, we, we don't associate the animals with the food in the grocery store. It's protein in plastic wrap and it tastes good with barbecue sauce and that's all they're thinking about it. I don't think American habits will change overnight. 
I don't think everyone, even with this, you know, food movement going on right now, I don't think everyone's going to put down their uh, McDonald's Big Macs and decide to uh, go and get some locally raised rabbit. That's not going to happen. But I think people will methadone themselves off of factory farm meat when they see the option for a dollar or two more for animals raised in a way that feels better to them. I think people are starting to pay that dollar or two more. I think that there's people who know more hunters and farmers and are welcoming those meals into their homes. I think just buying a box of organic oatmeal and making that your breakfast once a week instead of having bacon and eggs and a McMuffin, that's, that's changing things. It's changing your body, it's changing the economy, it's changing how things are being raised. It's important. But I think it's also, I think it's also incredibly important that if you're caring about animals, if you want them to be raised well, it's incredibly important that you support the farmers raising them well. You're not helping animals by not eating meat. You're not. That's like saying, I'm going to stop child abuse by not having kids. Guess what? You're childless. The kid down the street is still getting beaten. What you need to do is act, not be a pacifist about this. You need to decide, I'm going to buy, even if you don't want to eat meat, buy some ground round from a local farmer on grass-based agriculture and give that to your brother-in-law who loves to grill every Sunday. It's making a difference. Choices like that to support these people raising animals in an ethical way it makes everyone more okay with it. And if you're looking to be okay in here, it means making animals' lives better all around. And that doesn't happen by avoiding factory farms. And that doesn't happen by, you know, watching a bunch of PETA videos. <laughs> it, it, it happens because you choose to put your dollars where your votes are. It happens because you decide to, to get a share of a cow or buy a CSA of meat or vegetables. You're putting your money into those people's uh, pockets, the ones that are making a difference. And I'm not saying you have to change your entire life so that's all you eat. I mean, that'd be great if you can afford it and source it that way. I know I can't, and I make a living as a small farmer. But, what if you, but small changes, they add up, they make a difference. They make lives better for people. They make lives better for farmers. They make lives a hell of a lot better for animals. And that's part of being okay with it. You gotta look at the big picture. You can't look at one dead chicken and have your heart bleed because you killed a free range chicken that lived its entire life outside on sun. You need to look at that dead chicken and realize you're not a part of this horrible system where several hundred billion chickens are being killed after living their entire lives without sunlight, without feeling grass under their feet. You know, as it, as it was said by Kristen Kimball in her book, um, The Dirty Life, the way out is just part of the story. No one should be okay with killing anything. No one should be happy about it. But you should be okay with the fact that what it is you're eating lived a life it was supposed to live, whatever that means to you. Gibson? Animals are a part of our lives. They just are. And I'm okay entirely with there being a huge difference between this dog and those pigs outside and me. And this happened through education, through time, through surrounding myself with small farmers and people also living with animals. So that's my advice. Experience a life that matters to you and your ideals and morals will hopefully grow with it and they'll hold hands. Thanks for watching guys.